Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. I'm here today to appreciate the word of Jesus Christ. Hoping that some of you will give your light to Jesus Christ today. Today's message is fornication. Fornication. Let's talk about sex for a moment. The sin of fornication. Friends, fornication is a terrible and horrible sin. The word fornication in dictionary means sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. And the law forbids adultery and fornication. It is a criminal conversation. That's the word of dictionary. That's what it means. The word here, criminal conversation, simply means lifestyle. If fornication is your lifestyle, it is a criminal lifestyle. For a man who is married with an unmarried woman, that's what the dictionary says. It is wrong, and not only that it is wrong, but it is a criminal act. But do you know why? And do you know what? Fornication in dictionary is a criminal act. If you fornicate, you are a criminal. If you commit adultery, you are a criminal. According to what the dictionary says. Most people don't know this. It is a big crime to commit adultery and to fornicate. And now let's listen to what the Bible has to say about this sin of fornication. Because it is against the law of God. And it tells us that fornication is a sin. According to the law of God, fornication is a sin against the law of Almighty God. To commit fornication. But today, so many people just do it without even giving a thought. So many people today just commit fornication. But the Bible calls it sin. The sin of fornication is a criminal offense. Unfortunately, the world we live today, full of fornicators, we glorify it in the TV, in the shows, in the movie, in the soap opera, even in books, in songs. You tell about that Kinsley, she's my girlfriend, I love her. Friend, if you really love her, put ring or depart. Just leave it alone because God cannot and God will not approve your sinful lifestyle. Here's my advice. Get married quickly, immediately. Or break up. Get out of that relationship. Go your own way and do not again, ever again, fornicate. Friend, today, I want you to know that any sex outside marriage is a sin. It is the art, criminal art, and fornication is a sin against Almighty God. You see what God says concerning fornication is very, very important that you understand. Because this message, fornication, I pray God the Holy Spirit will touch your heart and your mind that you understand the sin of fornication listen to what the bible says in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 13 the bible says food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for the food but god will destroy both one and another now watch it the body is not meant for sexual immorality but for the lord and the lord for the body listen friends you can lie, it is outside your body. You can steal, it is outside your body. But when you fornicate, God says that your body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Because when God created man and woman, God did not create them to go and just fornicate.
God created them so that they would come together in the holy matrimony and they live in the God wants us to live until they do them apart. Now, what is fornication in the Bible? What can happen to you if you fornicate? I want to tell you, first of all, I don't want you to do it because I know what this sin does in the life of a believer. Not only that he breaks the God law, also breaks God's heart and he grieves God. God is angry. When you fornicate, God does not like when his people fornicate because it goes against his kingdom principle. God, if you fornicate, you make God angry. God wants his people to marry. So the first thing I want you to see and understand about this message of fornication is this. Not only it is a sin, but it is wickedness. As a Christian, you should understand, you should not fornicate. It's a sin. It is act of criminal act. It is a crime of your lifestyle. If that's your lifestyle, you should repent. You should not partake in it as a Christian. But if you are lost, I hope you get saved today. Yeah. And you must quit fornicating. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, flee, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside his own body. Now watch it. But the sexual immoral person sin against his own body. God says, flee, flee fornication. Do you know what it means to flee? Flee means run away. Run for your life. So that you don't do it. God said, take a flight. Flee. Run away from fornication. So that you will not allow yourself to be in a situation where you can perform it. In the Bible, there was a young man called Joseph. The Bible says, the jealous wife wants to rape him. Do you know what he did? He left his jacket, he left his cloth, and ran for his life. This is a special sin. Only fornication, adultery, sexual immorality. Bible tells us to flee. This sin comes with due penalty. This in the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 that if you sow to your flesh, you will reap what? The consequences, you will reap what? Decay in your flesh. But if you sow the seed of righteousness, you will reap eternal life. So you see, my dear friend, here is why the Bible says flee fornication. Because every other sin a person commits is outside his body. But the sexual immoral person sin against his own body. Know that about that. The Bible says fornication is a sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Or don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he says, Do not be deceived. There are sexual immoral, adulterers, non adulterers, non men who practice homosexuality, non thieves, non degrading. Not the drunkards, nor rivers, nor swanderers, we inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says, Now, such we are some of you. But you have been washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So now, brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul is saying, Before you get saved, before we get saved, we used to fornicate. But now that you are saved, you have been washed, you have been satisfied, you have been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God our Lord. So now you should not engage again. You should not engage again in the sin of fornication. When you go safe, you know that, that you should not fornicate again. Listen, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, God said, in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 30, 29, do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute. Lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. That's why today the government cannot let street crops around every street corner. They know why. You, as a parent, you cannot let your children to wash astray because you know the sin of fornication destroys a home and not only a home a society and not only a society a country so you see we have to hear what god is saying here 
Do not live your life as a prostitute. Flee. So free from fornication, free from it. Because when you see this sin, it's a special sin. It affects your body. Your body is temple of the Lord. You also sin against the Holy God. And for this, the Bible says free. And not only that, a person who fornicates is out of wickedness. Do you know that? It is a sin. That's why the Bible says, do not profane your daughter by making her prostitute. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother. So my dear friend. Sorry? Where is he right now? What's this, uh, what's this fictional character you can speak of? Do you know God? He's a fictional character. Is that what you think? And it's a, a truth. He's a fictional character. God bless you, brother. Yeah, I believe in But the, ba the Bible says in only a fool saying inside there's no God. Batman is more real. Are you a fool? I'm not a fool. Are you a so fool? So only a fool say in his heart there's no God. That's what the Bible says. That's not me saying it. But the Bible also says to sell your daughter into slavery. How much is your daughter? Excuse me? The Bible says we sell your daughter into slavery. Are you saying that or you are, are you are you are you just speaking for God? Yeah, no, it isn't the no fucking Bible. Don't swear, my brother. Have a blessed day. I think you have a lot of hate for yeah. God. Why do you hate God? COVID, cancer. Yeah, COVID, yeah, cancer? And, yeah, and to you think, it, do you think age. God created COVID and cancer? Yeah, that's what people like you say. Sorry? That's what people like you say. I'm just a, a Western Union boy saying the message. Yeah, yesterday a person said people who feel disabilities and cancer so, uh, make Brother, prior brother I see you hate God. Why do you hate God? Just tell me why. Is it because of cancer and COVID? Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who have been poor, people who have been bullied, people who have been discriminated against so just uh, because. Listen, brother, they have I, I've... And to, uh, yesterday, one of uh, people like you said the reason for disabilities and cancer is because of the devil. So do you think God just sent us cancer? I'm not saying that. Yeah, if you are not God saying is, that. That's good, brother. Yeah, if uh, God is real, why do people get cancer? Do you know why there's a cancer and sickness? Do you want to? Do you want to know why? I'll tell you what cancer is. Oh, you a, want to tell me? Okay. It's a mutated cell, and uh, that's what fucking cancer is. And you're uh, forcing bless. your faith. Uh, God bless you, brother. You're forcing your religion. God, I, I pray for so you to. I, I pray for you to repent. Okay. Yeah. Fuck off of your. Now let me tell you, my dear friend, why there's cancer and sickness in the world. God bless you. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. You're doing a great job. God bless, God bless you, man. Amen. So, my dear friend, the reason why there's a sickness in the world and there's a cancer, God did not cause it. The Bible says, when Adam sinned, sickness and death came in. The Bible said, the wages of sin, but the gift of life, which is in Christ Jesus, is eternal life, my dear friend. So, let me continue what I'm saying because today's message is what? Fornication. Why you should not fornicate? As a sin, the Bible says, flee from it. So it is your responsibility as a parent to teach your children so that they will not fornicate until they get married. It is not the job of the government because most of them fornicate. Not the government, not the school, not the society, not the social media, not the, not the website that you go. They can never teach you this. There are some things you don't learn in the school. Only the Bible will teach you. The Bible says flee. Flee from fornication. So it is very important that you, as a parent, you have to teach your children to live a life free from fornication. In Ezekiel 16, verse 24, here is God speaking about his people Israel. He says, and you fornicate with the children of Egypt, your neighbor, great ones of flesh and you multiply your fornications and you angry me dear that you angry me so you see when you when you fornicate you are making god to be angry when you fornicate the holy call of israel is angry because god made man and woman to please him and when a person fornicates do they please god no usually they please themselves Rather than God, for that reason the Bible says they became lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now let me say this. There is no satisfaction in fornication. In Ezekiel 16 verse 28, here is God also describing his people Israel as a whore. He says you play the whore with also with their serious. Now watch it. Because you are not satisfied. Yes, you play the whore with them. And still you are not satisfied. 
There's no satisfaction in fornication. There's no satisfaction in this pressure of sin. The Bible says, she who lives for pleasure is dead, even while she's still alive. No satisfaction in sin. No pressure in sin. And now, let me say this, it is not a sin to engage in sexual activity. It depends on who are you engaging in with. If it is done in material home, in a marriage bed, it is not a sin. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Yeah, anything I want is fair. What's the best one for me? Because I suffer. What do you suffer from? A lot of stuff. Uh, trauma. But I can pray for you. You can get healed. Do you believe God? I've got, yeah, of course. I'm full of crosses all over my body. Okay. Have you, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. 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 Are you a born again Christian? Yes. Do you know what it means to be born again? I'm not Christian again. Brother, I want to lead you to Christ and I'll pray for you right now. You get healed. Go quick, because I have a very important Every time people come to me, they tell me they have a more important thing to do. Can't you have two minutes for God right now? Yes, of course. So that you can get healed? Yes. Now, do you know what sin is? Sin. Oh, I'm a big sinner. I'm a sinner too. But today, Everybody is a sinner. Every one of us is a sinner, but you have to forsake our sin to see God. Are you willing today to forsake your sin? Yes, yes, yes. That must come from your heart. Yeah. God, God knows you. So obviously, God knows what you are thinking. Do you mean it? Yes, I pray, isn't it? Brother, do you mean that you are willing to forsake your sin right yeah, now? Of course, I suffer, of course. Amen. Now, pray with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Come inside my heart. Come inside my heart. I forsake my sins. And you must forsake my sins. I forsake my sins. I forsake my sins. I seek you today. I seek you today. I believe. I believe. That you die for my sins. That you did die for my sins. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And personal Savior. I'm a personal Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What is your name? It's Leon. Leon, let me pray for you, okay? In Jesus' name. Father, you say that you sent your word and your word heal our sickness and diseases. That's what your word says in the book of Psalm 107, verse 20. Father, the same word that you sent heal my sickness three years ago, your word said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, that your word is healing to my flesh and to my brother right now, flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I need your divine intervention right now, oh God. Father, come and show you who you are. I accepted, accepted you as his Lord and personal Savior. Father, your word, heal our sickness and disease by your scribe that we are healed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We say amen. 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 But I, you are healed in Jesus' name. Give me one amen. Fit, please. Anything you want is free. Jesus said. Yes. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you too. God bless you, brother. Amen. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. So I want to let you know today that fornication is a sin against the Holy God of Israel. This sin is a special sin. And says God provided for us, God knows that every man has a sex drive, but this says it's only privilege. For those who are married, even the marriage in bed, the Bible says, let the marriage be held in honor among all. And let marriage bed be undefiled. Watch it. For God will judge the sexual immoral and adulterous. You see, friend, to commit the act of fornication when you are not married, it is wrong and it is not okay. It is a sin and it is wickedness. God is anger. When a man and a woman come together in a sexual manner to commit fornication, and when they do that, God is angry because they are not married. God planned for marriage. Marriage couples only to come together to perform the sexual act. And then God will not be angry. And I'm telling you today, my dear friends, fornication is a sin. So stop sleeping around. If you sleep with him or her, and she's, he's, she's not your wife, and he's not your husband, God is angry with you. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12 says, 
My people consult a wooden idol, and a divine rod speaks to them. A spirit of prostitution leads them astray. They are unfaithful to their God. So you see, fornication leads people astray. And it removed them from the living God, and they break the law of God. And they are unfaithful to their God. Just Christ said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 through to 20. But what comes the act of man will proceed from the heart that defines a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. So he says, it is defining. When you commit sexual immorality, it defines you. The evil thought that leads you to fornicate. If you think about sleeping with a woman who is not your wife, you end up doing it. If you think about evil thought, that's why the Bible says we should take every captive of our thought to obey Christ. Because Jesus Christ wants us to live right and He wants us to think right. Not wicked thought, not prostituting, not making God angry, not defying yourself with evil thought. Number one, fornication is wickedness. Number two, fornication is not the way of God. Nowhere in the Bible God says that it is okay to fornicate. Nowhere God says in the Bible that it's okay to date. You can never find that in the Bible, my dear friend. So you see, he said, but I can't say I'm having a good time. No. In fact, it's the opposite is true. Let me give you some Bible verses about the will of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification, your sanctification that you abstain from sexual immorality. So what is the will of God? Do not fornicate. Because fornication is not the will of God. God does not want you to commit fornication. He says that each one of you should know how to control his own body in holiness and in honor and not in passion of loss like the Gentiles who do not know God. For people who are lost don't know God, they fornicate when they want to fornicate, they mate when they want to mate, they do the things when they want to do, they drink when they want to drink, they smoke when they want to smoke because they don't know God. So you see, the Bible says you as a Christian, you should never be like them. Are you listening, my dear friend? Fornication is a sin against the Holy God. It is a criminal act. And most people won't do it. They continue doing it because they don't know God. But God wants us to not live in such a immorality lifestyle. God created sex for a reason. It is not to, dis not to dishonor Him, but to honor Him. You see, fornication dishonors God. And God says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. So you see, God does not want us to commit adultery. God does not want us to fornicate. And so, it is not the will of God for any man and any woman to perform the sexual act outside marriage, matrimony. God says, get married or don't do it at all. God hates adultery. God hates fornication. Throughout the whole Bible, God, say, God says, do not commit adultery, do not commit adultery, do not commit adultery. Even King David did it. He received the God punishment. That's a punishment that comes with this sin. And for you, the Bible says, free from all sexual immorality. It is a wicked sin. It is not the will of God for you to commit fornication. In Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. He said, Kill that sexual desire that is in your flesh. Which one is the first one in the list? Sexual immorality. He says, Kill it, put it to death. What is earthly in you? Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, conversiousness, which is adultery. God says, Kill those impurity that is in you. Do not commit adultery, do not fornicate. Now watch this, because on the count of this, the wrath of God is coming. <laughs> For those who live in this kind of lifestyle, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 3 says, 
But sexual immorality and impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you. As a proper among the saints, Apostle Paul said, if you are a Christian, if you are a saint, do not ever commit fornication. As a Christian, you are not allowed to fornicate. And then he says, for you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexual immoral or impure or who is covetousness, that is adulterer, watch it, has no inheritance has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. In Acts 15, verse 20, but you should write to them, that is Gentiles, those are those who don't know God, to abstain from the things polluted by idols. Now watch it, from sexual immorality, from what is being so strange, strangle them from the blood. And so, if you eat food with the blood, the Bible said, do not, the Bible said, do not worship idol and do not fornicate. Because you see, once you start fornicating, you are making an idol from the opposite sex. And you want that sex more than God. And then the Bible says in verse 29, that you abstain from it, have been satisfied or been sacrificed to idols and from the blood and for what had been estranged from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these things, the Bible says you will do well. And that's why it's written to the earlier Christians. In the book of Corinthians, in the book of Collins, in the book of Corinthians, in all these books, Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth. All that churches, he seems to say more about fornication. Because they were Gentiles before they got saved. Because they used to, they accustom themselves to, to fornicate. Like the rest of the world here today in UK. They have no any problem with fornicating. What well, I want to tell you today, it is wrong. And not only that it's wrong, it is a sin. And not that it's a sin, it is wickedness. Many people today never thought about God. Never thought about the will of God. They just fornicate when they want to fornicate. I want you to listen to this verse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9. 11 says i write to you in my letter not to associate with sexual immoral people apostle paul said if you're a christian do not do not associate yourself with the people of this world who fornicate and in verse 10 he said not all men in sexual immoral of this world or greedy or slanderers or adulterers since then you need to go out of the world so he said it is hard not to because the world is full with fornicators but then he says verse 11 but now i'm writing to you not to associate yourself with anyone who bears the name of the brother if he's guilty of sexual immorality or greedy or adultery revival or drunk or swindle not even eat with such a person now here is a command from the word of god if you're a christian is you a christian fornicating the bible says do not even associate yourself with that person do you know why? I tell you why. Because it is a wicked act. It is a sin against the Holy God. Because that person will do what? Bring you down. The Bible says the bad company destroy good morals. Do you know my dear friends? God bless you, sir. Amen? What do you want? You don't find mine. The French Bible. Oh, French Bible? Yeah. Um, call me, please. Huh? Call, me, call me on Sunday so I, I don't forget it, okay? God bless you, sir. Yeah. Amen? So because I want you to say, we Christians, God wants us to live separately, not as the world is living. We Christians, we should not fornicate. And I repeat, do not and do not fornicate. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, chapter 6 verse 13 says, Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for the food, but God will serve both one another. Here is why, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the law and the law for the body. God does not want Christians to fornicate. The lost people can do whatever they want to do because they don't know God. But you as a Christian, you are not lost. You are once lost, but you are not being saved. God says, this is my way. You should not fornicate. Neither should you love anything else than God. Just why say, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. So I say, Christian, either you love God or not. Because if you love God, he said, do not fornicate. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2 says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Yes, 
God wants his people to have sex, but he's the one who is married. You see, my dear friend, if you are not married, you are not allowed to have sex. That's why I'm preaching to you today. Fornication is a sin against the Holy God. Yes, you are not allowed. Amen? If you are not married to the person, you are not allowed. It's a sin. The government think it is okay. The school think it's okay. The society think it's okay. But it's not okay to be sleeping around. My dear friend, sex is only privilege for those who are married. It is the will of God that his people do not fornicate. Friend, I wish I could emphasize more about fornication because I know what this sin does in the life of people. He stains your garment, my dear friend. He can separate you from God for eternity. Friend, quit fornication. Let me give you this fearful verse. And it tells us what God thinks about fornication. Listen to what I can say. God hates, God hates this wicked sin, fornication. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 to 10 says, Now these things took place as an example for all that we might not desire evil as they did. Do you find out what they did? Do not be adulterous as some of them were, as it is written. Watch it. The people sat down and eat and drink and rose up to play. Like many of us today, we think it is okay to go and party hard. We think God said to go to Paul, get drunk, dance around. Listen to what the Bible says here. We must not indulge, indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. Now watch it. 23,000 fell in a single day. Now what is this saying? Fornication. You say, Brother Kingsley, I'm only partying, I'm only having fun. So what? Friend, go ahead. God hate fornication. He killed 23,000 people in, a, in one day. Do you still want to fornicate? Start for London, UK? Here's the point. Fornication is a sin. I don't think it's a sin. It is wickedness. And God hates it. He angers God. He defies you. He dishonors for you. Guess what? It is out of wickedness. And God said, do not and do not do it because it is not the will of God for you to commit adultery to fornicate, to sin against the Holy God of Israel. Fornication is the work of flesh. Do you know that? What is fornication? It is the work of flesh. And so you must control yourself. Self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So you see people today who fornicate is because they cannot control themselves and they do whatever they want to do. But you as a Christian, you have been warned and you must learn how you can control yourself. The Bible says the grace has given us ability to say no to every ungodliness, the worldly passions, and the desires of the flesh. Those who give their life to Christ have submitted their flesh and been crucified in the altar of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which is this. Now here is the first one in the list, adultery. The second is fornication. Do you know what adultery is? Is someone who is married committing Fornication with someone who is nice. If that's not your part, it's not your partner. That's not wife or your husband. Leave her alone and leave him alone. Now, fornication is what? Going out and sleeping around. And then it tells all this uncleanness. So you see, committing for, out of fornication makes you unclean. It defies you. The next one in the list is lavishness. Do you know what lavishness means? It means an unbright sexual passion and desires. You see, someone who commits fornication, that person is unclean and lavishness. It means you just enjoy sleeping around in objects. But you, as a Christian, listen to what Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But you walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And so there's a spirit which is the spirit of God. A safe person must walk in the spirit. Not some days, all time. And that according to the flesh, the Bible says, put to death that which is flesh that is in you, that you may walk in spirit. If you are saved, you cannot, you cannot walk in spirit and then going, lusting, or fornicate, or committing adultery. You know, that can never happen. Because you are walking in the spirit. And the spirit, the spirit of God, are given to you. If you walk in the flesh, you definitely going to commit that sin of act of adultery and fornication. And God is not pleased. So fornication is a gateway to other sin. 
It is a pathway to destruction. That's the reason Apostle Paul said the work of the flesh are manifest, which is this adultery, fornication, and the rest of them follows uncleanness, lavishness, adultery, surgery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, envy, murders, adult, uh, drunkenness, rivalries, and like this, of which I warned you before. Hand. Just as also told you in the time past. Now here is the bottom line of the bottom lines. That those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you don't want to go to heaven, continue sleeping around. Continue having sex outside marriage. You will end up going to the place the Bible calls hell. But if you want to go to heaven, you don't sleep around, you don't fornicate, you don't commit adultery because that says is something that God created only between husband and wife. So if you're not married, flee. Flee from sexual immorality, my dear friend. Slap from London, UK. Remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord.